In my previous video, we identified the different problems that may occur in the database system, the different error scenarios. In this video, we start looking at how to fix it, how to be able to cope with those scenarios. And what we do is we introduce another type of storage that is called stable storage. This might also be a hard disk, this might be an SSD, whatever. It's a persistent medium that allows you to write data out. And this is not used in a similar way as a store is used. Yes, this is used differently. So at a high level, what we have here in the architecture is something like that. We have two boxes. One is a store and the other is called stable storage. And maybe you remember from my previous videos, we have seen a situation like that already. Because when we looked at logging, we had something very similar. We had a store and we had this extra box on the right side, which we coined the log. This was the log in the video and this was the actual store. But this is exactly the idea we're looking at in stable storage. So just to recap what's going on, let's revisit this example we had in the logging video in 14.163. There I used this book example, this publishing a book example to explain logging. And the idea is assume you publish a book. Let's assume it's the first edition. And now what you do is for each and every change, for every typo you have in the book, for every addition you want to make to the book, you not only change it here in the book, you also lock the change in a log file. And that is a log file here where we are doing that. So this means assume there's a typo on page 23. This is misspelled. So the log file is recording that information that we changed this old entry to the new entry. And simultaneously, we also create a new edition. So we change here, let's go back from edition one to edition 1.1 when doing this change. And we do that for each and every change, which of course in a real world you wouldn't do for a real book, but that's basically the idea of logging. You keep the information about the change in two different places. Once in the store, so this is a store in this world, and this is a log, and we call this log stable storage for different reasons we look at in a moment. So every change we do, we record it in both places in the log, in this format here in this example, but we also create a new version in the store. And that is what we do for each and every change. So when should we get a long list? of all these changes recorded in the log and a different concern will be how to prune this log. So if you keep the different changes, if you write down the information on what change was performed when in the log, eventually your log will grow to a tremendous size and you should worry about how to decrease the size of the log. You will have separate storage problems just by keeping all these log entries that's another concern we will look at later on. But for the moment, it's the same idea as shown in that older very video already. We have a read-write file. That is our store. That is where we apply the change. And we have a separate log file, which redundantly keeps the information about the different changes. And again, already in that video on that in that separate video on logging i mentioned that this is just another instance of the data redundancy pattern or the all levels are equal pattern as well because this idea of logging can be applied even on different levels of the storage hierarchy so we learn about this general idea of logging however to really make this method work to really make recovery work in a database system we have to look at some details that are very important one important concept in the recovery is called write ahead logging. So what does that mean? It defines the order in which you do the changes in this read write file in the store and in the log. Write ahead logging means whatever you do, whenever you do a change, you first append that change to the log and flush it to your persistent medium. That's very important. Yeah, first write out this log record, that log information that tells you what change was done. And then afterwards, you actually apply the change to the store and maybe also write it out to the store. That's very important for the correctness of the 
recovery methods we were looking at in the following. So this order is defined by right ahead logging. Let's look at an example because uh, if you remember from the storage hierarchy video, we have a database buffer, at least in the disk-based database systems, we still have such a buffer with all its advantages, with all of its problems. So logging gets more complicated. What does write ahead logging mean in such a scenario? So we have a store that has at least two levels. So there's this main memory level, which is not a persistent medium. And there is the hard disk, which is persistent. And the same separation can be done on stable storage. So what does write ahead logging mean? Let's run through one example one by one and see what happens. So assume you start with your first addition. So the addition you have on disk is equal to the addition you have in main memory in your store. Now you want to do a change. What do you do? Well, there was a change, so let's lock it. So we, we create a lock record in main memory and then we write it out to the lock disk. Now we are allowed to change it also in the store, to write it out to the store. So this is okay. We could now write it to main memory, that's fine. Apply the change here in main memory and then write it out to disk. So here the changed page or the changed version of this book, to stick with the example, was now persisted on disk. And this is allowed under the write ahead logging protocol because we already wrote out the log record to disk. It was already persisted. As long as we first persist the log record and then we write out the corresponding change in the store, it's all fine. So this is a correct application of the write ahead logging protocol. Let's do another variant of write ahead logging. So we could also have done it in this order. So again, same starting situation, no changes yet. Now we apply the change to the store. This is also fine. Notice the difference to the example above. We, above, we first wrote out the log record to disk and then we did the change. Here we first do the change to the store in main memory, to the main memory version, but not to disk. This is still the old version before this log entry was done. So this is still fine under write ahead logging, but now before writing out this change, it is very important that we first write out the log record to disk. That is what we do here. So now the log record was written out and then we are allowed to write out this changed version to disk as well. So this is still fine with respect to write ahead logging. Finally, let's also show an example where write ahead logging is violated. So this would be non write ahead logging and this is not what we want to have. So if we do it in this order, here again, the same starting situation, no changes yet. We write the log record to main memory, but we do not write it out to disk. Then we apply the change. Everything's still fine with respect to write ahead logging, nothing violated yet. But now, if we write out this page to disk before writing out the log record, this is violating the write ahead logging protocol. This is not fine. This is a problem and this leads to all kinds of problems. So this would be violating the write ahead logging protocol. So in summary, what does this protocol, what does this principle mean? It means that when committing a transaction, you first force the log entries that that transaction created to the log disk. And log entries means that is information about changes. If you have a transaction that only read stuff, yeah, that, that, that's not changing anything. It's just reading any information. There's no problem anyhow. But typically transactions perform some changes and for every change we keep such a log record in the log and we have to make sure that we force out those log entries to this extra disk, this disk that is going to be used for logging, also called stable storage. Yeah? Stable storage, it's the same thing here, stable storage. And only then we write the changed page to the disk store. That is the order that is important. And this also implies not only when actively committing a transaction, you, you should be considered to respect the write ahead logging principle, but also when writing back any dirty page to the disk store. Again, this is a case when we evict. 
yeah, eviction, page eviction. The database buffer may choose a victim page to evict because it needs to make room to load a new page. And we had that in the previous video already, the situation, then it may evict the page and it may write out the changes on a dirty page first. Eviction, if you remember how a database buffer works, means you have the page in the database buffer, again, page 42, page 42. If this is a newer version, which means this contains a change that's not on the store yet. Huh? Again, this is a store, this is a database buffer, database buffer. Yeah? If this has a newer version, which is not yet in the store, this is called a dirty page. So before removing it from the database buffer, we have to write it back to the store. In this situation, again, you have to respect the write ahead logging principle. You force all the corresponding log entries to the log disk. What are the corresponding log entries? That are the log entries that made this page dirty. So here you perform the change. Well, when doing this change, you created a log entry. And now, before writing out the dirty page back to the store, you must make sure that that log entry is flushed to disk. That is what this rule is saying. And then only you are allowed to write the changed page back to the disk store. So here, this is also something that affects the database buffer. The overall rule is, is really simple. So overall, this is both things are saying the same thing. Whatever you do, flush log entries, and then uh, first flush log entries, and then flush pages of the store. That is the order you must respect under the right ahead logging principle. And that's very important for the recovery methods we look at in the following videos. If you liked this video, don't forget to hit the like button. Thank you. So if you want to see more database videos, be it in English or in German, take a look at my website Datenbankenlernen. It has a couple of English and German videos. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel, Jens Did, or you look at our website, infosys.uni-saarland.de. See you there!